After having looked at that beaver earlier, we're now down at his brush pile and lodge. And one of the things about beaver is they will build their lodge. In this case, he's a river beaver, right? So he's in a swamp. He's really on the bank of a stream here, probably anchored on some tufts of grasses or a log. And then he's got the remains of his winter repasts because he has got to make sure that he has enough wood cut. Whoa, Tom! Oh, jeez. You got to have enough wood cut to get through the winter. And it could be a long, icy winter. He might be stuck in there from mid-November right through April. So it's all about getting enough of this forage stored and anticipating the season properly. I wonder if beavers have the farmer's almanac. There are now two beaver under Three. this. There's a th another. another size of a marmot. Look at the size of the beaver here coming. Huge. They're co you thought that other one was big. That one's twice as big as the one we just saw. So there's three right under me plus that one that's back there. That's four. And then there's the one way down there. That's five beaver here. I think beaver um, babies will stay at home for a year after they're born. These are babies. These are huge. I mean, they're, these are they're, they're, 40 pounders. It doesn't make sense that they're, uh, that they're all adults, though. But uh, they're certainly here. Tom, go. I'm having Tom lead the way over this beaver dam because they don't look happy right now. And I feel like in the world of being me, you know, Tom was a former student years and years ago, and I mean, he... Oh, there he is! There's the beaver right there, swimming underwater. I just broke through my ankles in the living room right now. Don't, ta Tom, you're going to get eaten. Tom, you'd look, you'd look good with a friggin' peg leg, though. Peg leg price. Taking one for the team, Tom. Finding out where the weak spot in the dam is so I don't fall in. That's the kind of guy Tom is. Now, fishing brooks like this, Tom is right here, and I'm right here. We're just taking our time casting going down the brook, and it's like nobody's complaining. We're catching fish. The yeah, the beavers are on. They're not happy. <laughs> and that's the thing. When you have kayaks, don't be afraid. Oh, right there. there you go. You got don't be afraid to explore. Oh, it's a pickerel. Oh, no. You, you know, you got this vessel that's meant to go out into these uh, these outwaters, so get out there. Oh, he's a slimy sucker. He's at that size that just drives you crazy. All right, there he is. Duck in the water, pickle. Got to get out of the way of Tom here. Oh, you know, we're in this brook that is, what, 12 feet wide, 14 feet wide, and we're just taking our time going down the brook kitchen in front of us. There's little slaws out to the side. There's little beaver banks that we're banging. Like there's a slaw right here, Tom. I'm coming over the top. I'm going to attack the slaw. Oh, yeah. Oh, right, in the arrow root. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. You got to get back in there, Tom. There's more slaw. <laughs> The great thing about it is you're just kind of meandering along. Now it's a little largemouth, not that little. Nice size. Oh, he's off. Pickerel must have just, oh, Pickerel keeps on going after mine. Oh, he got it, sir. Uh, and, I, and there's a slaw right there. Can't stop. Oh. Yeah, there's there's several fish here. Throw down that slough. Another beaver. Another beaver. Dan. You know, 
I think that this, that, that it goes both ways. We can take either brook. I think that there's two brooks, is what I think. I think that's a brook, not, ju not just a slough. Or is it? Does it end or does it keep going? Running water in the state of Massachusetts belongs to the people of Massachusetts. Yes, we have snuck out on a pond that I have been looking at my entire life. <laughs> Tom, this is a massive swamp, huh? Oh, Tom, check out the pink ones. This is a different kind of pond lily right here. You don't see a lot of pink pond lilies. You just don't. You see white ones, you see yellow ones, but pink ones are very rare, at least out here in the West. Me and Tom are doubled up here. Tom thinks he's got a good one. I'm hoping for a perch. I got me a nice little chunker. Tom's got a bigger one. Tom's got about a two. How about a two? Well, show it again, Tom. It's about a two. Yeah. Beautiful. Doubling up, Tom, on the spoon. See? We've decided that it's time to start using the Johnsons more. There's water where you just, you got weeds, all kinds of weeds, and it's almost impossible. Oh, there's, oh, I just had a great hit right there, Tommy. Oh, he killed it. You know, you got water where even spinnerbaits are tough to throw, especially when you're talking late June or July, August. So the Johnson silver minnow and other weedless spoons like it are an old solution to a problem that I like because as I have said already they tend to be weedless and not fishless yeah you'll get your misses on them like you do with every lure but they're a lot more of a sure thing than a frog right Tom? Their kids are having fun over here. We have penetrated the inner sanctum, Tom. Nobody comes where we are. <laughs> we are literally in naked water, Tom. This is crazy. And I have a feeling there's some hogs in this, don't you? There's a lot of fish. I mean, and they're not, they're not stunted looking. They're not like hammerheads. They've got bellies on them, you know? I didn't even record the last one, which was about the same size as this. A little bigger than this. Yes. These are nice, healthy looking fish. Spinnerbait now. Got a little more water. And I'm just waking it, making a little bit of a burn, bringing it across the top, which, as you know, I like to do. One of my bread and butter techniques. Oh, missed one there. And it's a calm day. Quite often, this is not a great technique in a calm day. There's another one. I don't think they see a lot of spare baits in here, Tom. <laughs> oh, yeah. What are we looking at here? We got no weeds. Tom's got one on the spinnerbait. Oh, he's a bigger one. Not that much bigger, but nonetheless, 
a more respectable size. Pickle! Good, they're after Tom now. They're leaving me alone. Right at the boat, this guy pounded it. Oh, yes. Another fat guy. Like Tom says, they're a little stained. I mean, they, they, they're not as brightly colored as they are in a lot of lakes because there's a little bit of stain in this lake. We're fishing at, like, noon. <laughs> it's like midday. The European swan is a beautiful sight. However, they are invasive. And most young men in Western Mass have had experiences, Tom. Remember when you were a little kid and your mother brought you to Stanley Park? Remember that? What happened when you got too close to the swans, Tom? It happens to every little boy in Western Mass. It's not a good thing. And there they are the culprits, the swans. They're really beautiful birds. I'm sure they got a nest around here somewhere. That's the biggest one today so far, probably two and a half, three, right? Yeah, they're fat. Here we go. Somebody got me into the weeds, boy. There's some, there's some activity out here in the middle. Oh, yeah. These spoons are just kicking butt today. No, it was on a spoon. Well, right here, you have another beaver lodge that we didn't even see. It's right there, hidden on the bank. And that's a fairly fresh lodge. Oh, and here's the beaver right here. He just went right underneath me. He's coming toward you, Tom. Be careful, Tom. He's right underwater. Tom, he's heading for you. He's right underwater. Watch out, he's coming. Oh, that's the last thing we need, Tom. It's one of those things gnawing away on you. Ooh, Tom, on, the, on your right, there was a, uh, is it? It's a fine specimen of something right there on your right. This wildflower right here. Oh, yeah, that white wildflower, Tom. It is a fine specimen of poison hemlock. Deadly, Tom. That's what killed Socrates right there. If you were a philosopher, you'd have to be on guard. They killed the entire soccer team. <laughs> You're kind of a pun guy. Yeah, there's our four foot clearance right there. There's a bass right over there. I can see him. Oh, right there. <laughs> Lucky I did not set the hook. Oh, nice largemouth just followed me, a couple of them.
Berkshire box. They're all over the place. They're off every roadside. You can't miss them. You'll see them. When you see them, find an access point and get at them. Right, Tom? We had a good time today. We caught more bass than we were able to keep track of. Some of reasonable size, pickerel, panfish. But this bog that we're on is like so many across the Berkshires from all the way up in North Adams, all the way south to Holland. You just gotta get out there and you gotta hit them. Shake or no. There it is. We're right near Snagglewood, Tom. 